and welcome to my channel and I'm Stephanie if you didn't know that already and this is my series let me introduce you as I said this is my series let me introduce you um I'm hoping to get some amazing authors to introduce you to, even if you don't know, if you already know them, uh, but you want to know a little bit more about them. All right, let's say hello to Willow Winters. Willow, if you would be oh so kind enough to introduce yourself to us. Hi, um, I'm Willow. <laughs> I was a stay-at-home mom who loved reading romance, mm -hmm. and then I had my baby girl six years ago, and I just started writing. I could not stop writing. It became a recovery for finding myself again. I was no longer just Sean's wife, no longer just Jackson Evie's mom. I, I reclaimed a piece of me in writing romance novels and I loved the challenge and and now it's it's my empire. <laughs> <laughs> so what type of romance do you write? Uh, oh, the explicit kind. They are all 18 plus all of them. And I go into heavy detail. Um, I love the detail. Love is there. That's <laughs> love is in the details. Um, and I write a major, like a, a vast, um, like a ver I write a variety of subgenres. Like I'll have a bartender, small town romance, um, and then a mafia world, uh, where you fall into with, uh, this world with very, heavy and uncomfortable themes and topics that are not for everybody. Uh, and I have two different pen names. I have Willow Winters, which writes, you know, all of them. And then W Winters, which indicates to readers, this one is dark. It might not be for you. It, it has some triggers in it. Um, and I've, I've tried to market my books so that it's very obvious as well, because not all books are for every person. Yeah. This is very, very true. Um, I love that you have that distinction between Willow and W because I, when I look at your backlist, which by the way, is absolutely amazing. You have 50 plus books. Oh my goodness. I know. <laughs> and all kinds of crazy stuff. Just like you said, different subgenres. So which subgenres, um, which subgenre did you start with? I started with the Mafia, but it was kind of Mafia light, and it's still on Willow, not W Winters, because even though there's some violence that comes with Mafia and um, like blackmail, I want to say it's playful blackmail. <laughs> like in book one, her ex like left her and and left a um, like he's he's dead, and he left a debt owed to the mob, um, and she very much is attracted to the bookie and the bookie is very much attracted to her. And um, even though it's, it's, you know, it's a little not legal, um, it's not <laughs> uncomfortable because so, so it's still on Willow um, just because I, I like to call it mafia light. Um, it doesn't go into that emotional depth and darkness uh, and it's, it stays very much like above that water. So, yeah. So would you consider yourself a traditionally published author or a straight indie author, or are you a hybrid of both of them? Indie. I am entirely indie and I love it. And when people ask me, you know, what do you do? I always say I'm a self-published romance author because I'm very proud of the self-published. I'm very proud of the romance. Um, and I do think that we're seeing this, this wave and this increase of support and respect for both the self-published author as well as the um, romance author, which in in the past has not been so uh, at all. There's definitely some misconceptions and um, some some judgment uh, that goes along with both of them. But I am I am most certainly self published. Um, I have had some traditional deals offered, and I've never taken them. So yet, I mean, yeah, I'll never say never. But yeah, so far they just they have not fit. So. Okay, are you a reader yourself? Yes, I have not read nearly as much as I I wish I have. Um, like in the past, this last two years, I've slowed down dramatically with COVID and having the kids at home 24-7 and being oh, stuck yeah. in the house. My writing or my reading plummeted. My writing also slowed down actually, but my my reading plummeted. I'm a part of a book club called the Bleeding Hearts Book Club at the Christiana Mall, Barnes and Noble. 
I love them. They're wonderful. And it's only because of them that I kept up reading at all. Because once a month we meet up and we get to discuss things. And so thank, thank goodness for them, for Heather at the Barnes & Noble at Christiana Mall. <laughs> <laughs> Plug right there. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> if you're do. ever looking to see a sighting of Willow, you might want to check out that Barnes and Noble, maybe. Yes. Yeah. And it's a great book club for romance too. And we do Zooms. We have Rhonda <laughs> lives in Texas and she comes. I'm in Delaware. So um, yeah. So if you want to be a part of a romance book club, it's an amazing one. <laughs> so what genre do you read within? Romance. And okay. like and I know some authors say that they won't read their the the subgenre that they write. I don't care. I will read whatever they tell me to read. That's good. I will read it. Um, I read my first historical that I loved, absolutely Ooh. loved. It was The Highwayman by Kerrigan Brim. Yes, I love that book. Oh love my god, the vows when they're they're in this orphanage and they're just kids and they exchange these vows. My heart, like, so I, sweet. So yeah. it was just done so beautifully. Love it really it. was. So that changed my mind, and I was like, okay, maybe I do like historical romances. <laughs> so, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so, do you have any? No, we're not going to ask that question yet. We're not going to ask that question. We are going to ask the question of how do you come up with your characters on what they look like? Do you use like a storyboard or do you use celebrities and picture them as your stories? How do you come up with your characters? So this might be a little bit boring, but when I'm trying to sleep at night is generally when my stories come to me. Um, so I'm not online. I'm not thinking about celebrities. I'm not thinking about anything. It just hits me. And it's a very cinematic and visual way, uh, just like a dream would be. So it's it's very much already established in a lot of ways. And generally, there's just a setup, just a meet cute um, that I can see very visually. And then there are other scenes that come, and it kind of builds on one another. And that's how how the stories develop until the point where I feel that I know the story well enough where I can sit down and I can just write it. Um, so I, yeah, so it, it kind of is the story leads everything as opposed to the characters, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, yeah, it does. So, it does. Yeah. Yeah. So they just, they are who they are and I'm just experiencing it and then writing it out. Wow. That's amazing. So that brings up another like off topic. Um, <laughs> but there is a lot of not debate, but conversation about, um, people that read and can visualize and, um, or people that read and don't visualize. So which would you consider yourself? Are you a reader that visualizes and a writer that visualizes, which you kind of sort of answered already, yeah. but at the same time, um, when you're reading, do you visualize or would you say you're on the other side? 100% I visualize everything that I write. I also try to write so that you can visualize it. So it's almost like you're in a movie theater as opposed to uh, reading a book. Like, I, I want you to hear it. I want you to see it. I want you to smell it. I want you to feel that you are there. So it's very, very visual for me. Nice. And I hope, I hope that the reader does too. Can you hear my dog? I was wondering. <laughs> My husband just got where mine is. So I'm, is I'm surprised mine is it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That is Charlie. Dope. My husband just got him. Um, but yes, yeah. And that's with the editing. The one thing that I ask my my betas and my um, editors is, you know, this is what I'm seeing. And I can talk it out, which is obviously a different way than writing it. And I want to make sure that they're seeing what I'm seeing. Nice. Because that's, there can be some lost in translation there sometimes when there's extra information in my head that I don't realize the reader has not already accepted. So Okay. Okay. That's pretty cool. That is really cool. I love that. Um, so which book or series <laughs> or saga <laughs> would you like to see come to the big screen, small screen, or mini series? The Merciless World. It's 17 novels. I love it. It's dark. It's that that is the world that created W Winters, where I was like, okay, some of my readers are not going to to want this like it's because it does have some triggering content to it mm -hmm. um but i it is the most cinematic in my opinion it is the most there's 
what do I have six couples all together? Mm -hmm. Um, so, and the story intertwines and I, I just think that it would resonate so very well as a TV series. Um, so that is my hope. And I actually just talked to my agent about it and she sent it for coverage, which is where readers, yeah, they, they read it and see like, is it, is this, a maybe a considering or a no in terms of like would it translate well into screen? So keep my fingers are crossed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my, mine are too. Oh my goodness, I would love to see the Merciless series yes. up on screen. I mean, I love the graphic novels, which by the way, I got all of them, and I can't Thank wait you. for the next one to come out. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just loving just the the way that the artist interpreted the book, and you know. It's just great. I love it. I love it. I love it. So who would you cast? Oh, I so, know. I mean, that would be like a long list, though. That's um, a very so long list. It's a very long list. your first couple. It's Dom, right? Uh, but it's uh, so Merciless World would be Carter. Okay. Would be Carter and Aria or his brother. Like he has all these brothers. Um, right. It is so, so first of all, I'm not very good with names of actors and actresses at all. Just give me some roles. Like, I might be able to help you out. <laughs> you remember how it was Josh Hartnett in Sin City, how he played the assassin? Yes. I could absolutely see him being um, Daniel Cross, uh, who technically okay. that was the first book that I wrote. It's called Possessive. And it was the first one that I wrote that started the world because he's very charming like he's somebody who you could absolutely trust. And then he's like this cold hearted, like actually like mm -hmm. person who, who, who would literally kill you in the elevator, but you would happily get on it with him <laughs> <laughs> because he has this trust. He's so charming. He's so charming. Exactly. <laughs> so 100% I could see him being uh, Daniel Cross. Um, okay. And that's kind of like where, <laughs> sort of where I stop in terms of knowing what actor could play what character um i love you have any female characters that you would mm -hmm. you have I a female actress oh, yes to go with know, a female you know, character do you know gray's anatomy so uh delilah who she would be in in and out the whole the way that i see it in my head it goes back and forth delilah do you know gray's anatomy um the sister who what is her name maggie yes, yes! Maggie. What is it? So in the beginning of Grey's Anatomy, when she first comes on, like before, because I feel like her character kind of softened. Yes. Like, and I was like, in that beginning, that character, like, I could see her okay. in Delilah 100%. Yay. Oh, like, my goodness. So that brings me to another question. Um, <laughs> that kind of caught me off guard when I read that series. So that series is called. This Love Hurts Trilogy. Right. Mm -hmm. So when I was reading that, I think I got to maybe book two, and then I realized that that was an interracial relationship. That she's actually black, and I didn't yes. just say her dark skin, meaning she was tanned. Like, right. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. She said so, the same thing. She said she was, well, she was in book one, but she was later on. She was like, no, she actually is black. Like right. Because a lot of authors do not say she's black, her black skin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, well, the thing that cued me off was the way that you discussed her hair with the silk, uh, with the silk, with a yeah. silk bonnet and things like that. And I was like, oh, wait a second. Now let me look back. And I looked back mm -hmm. and was like, there were way more cues to say that she was black than just this silk bonnet thing going on. <laughs> <laughs> But I feel like it's it's almost like like the way that Tish said it is you don't trust when an author says it now because so many authors she's a wh a white woman but her skin is tanned so she's not actually you know uh, South Asian or or a brown woman or a black woman she's just a white woman who is tan so yeah so I totally. I understand that. I think maybe from the beginning, I should have been like, she is black. I think Katie Robert, I don't know if you saw, there was an article or there was a post somewhere that she explicitly said, like, instead of assuming all characters mm -hmm. are white, she explicitly said in the beginning, um, I forget what book it was. I oh, but I thought it was brilliant. I, um, it was I cool. think it was the fourth or fifth book in her Wicked Villain series. The one with Ursula in it, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, yeah. I like that um, that definition. Have you received any pushback on making that distinction or um, 
writing about interracial relationships or anything like that? No, I haven't, which um, I, I like, I half expected I would because she was my first woman of color, writing woman of color. And before that, um, just to be very raw, I was like, this is not my story to tell. It is not my story to tell. And then I saw a tweet and someone said, I want to read a woman who looks like me, a black woman who just has a love story, not about trauma, not about racism, but just a love story. And I was like, oh, I could do that because I know black women and I love, like I have, it's your, your environment. You're supposed to write your environment, but I never wanted to cross a boundary. And that's when I was like, I need to educate myself on what the boundary is because I have been assuming and I was wrong. I was absolutely wrong. So I am so happy to finally be including women of color and men of color <laughs> into my books and writing, you know, the world around me and being more inclusive and more diverse. So yeah, it's exciting. But with that tweet, I will never forget that tweet because it hit me in a way where I was like, well, of course, <laughs> like, why did I not already know this? <laughs> And do you make sure that you sort of get it right without stepping on toes by using sensitivity readers or anything like that? Absolutely. Yeah. Sensitivity readers. I think it's just, it's very important because, you know, my, the household that I grew up in was white, 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 and there was absolutely racism, 100% racism. Like I, I remember my uncle freaking out about his daughter dating a black man. And I like, yeah, like, like absolute racism. So there are things that I am like, I know that I grew up in an environment where there were going to be microaggressions and I did not realize that that's what that was. So 100%, I, I will always use a sensitivity reader um, and make sure that, that there is nothing in there, even if it's the most subtle thing, even if, if it's a a single word that can be associated with a microaggression or that can perpetuate a harmful stereotype or harmful rhetoric um, because they they absolutely exist still and it, it will only go away if you identify it if you educate acknowledge and and remove it physically like be on the lookout for it so i think it's really important to use sensitivity readers oh, i got very you. lucky yeah thank you for uh you know explaining that and you know being so candid and honest about that I try to be transparent because I think it's the only way we can grow is to just be raw and honest and, and identify things. So, yeah, I got lucky with my my wounded kiss world. My vampire is um, Filipino and my editor, I was like, I sent it to my editor and I was like, I need to find sensitivity reader. She's Filipino. I did not. <laughs> nice. I didn't really. And she was like, you need to add. She added in Jasmine um, and other little things from her culture. She was like, just take a look. Tell me what you think. And I, I loved her input. So sometimes I get lucky. <laughs> but um, yeah, that one, I was like, oh, this was made. This was made for her. So, yeah. I love it. So we I know I know <laughs> that you have been in the writing in the writing cave as well as being super busy with your store you got to tell us about the store and your TikToks are blowing up <laughs> yeah so, um can you tell us a little bit about how many books and things like that do we have in the works coming up so I have four on pre-order, um, which I'm super excited about. And they're four different worlds. One is still the Merciless world that is ongoing. And it is the last brother, Declan Cross. He comes out this uh, fall, winter. And then I have my Wounded Kiss world, my paranormal that comes out uh, October, which I'm, I love. They're only novellas. They're very short and very fast. Um, but it's so like... It's smutty with like that bit of darkness to it that just like you get all these twists and gut punches. And so I, I love it. It's very fast paced. Then I have the trilogy, the Kiss Me trilogy is coming to a close this summer. And then this spring, I have my small town world, um, the Tequila Rose world. I have a little bit dirty. He's the mechanic and it's just a standalone, but I love it. It's second chance. So it has all the feels and yeah. So I'm, I'm excited for all of them, but all very different. They are and then very March different. 1st, something's coming, um, but I can't say what it is, but it launches on March 1st. So <laughs> <laughs> well, you can tell us because this won't come out until after March 1st. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, 
free. I have two free stories um, and it's collections with other authors, but you download the link and you can choose which stories you want. And we're all collaborating together though. Um, but you can choose which oh, ones you want for free. It does awesome. sign you up to their newsletter, but only the authors you pick, which I think is much different from the, you know, get all 30 books, but you have to sign up for all 30 authors. Not everybody right. wants, wants that. So yes um, i'm really excited once That's it's just like awesome. friends to lovers it's my first friends to lovers um okay. it's very like ooey gooey sweet and i was just like i need that right now so <laughs> <laughs> well you guys you just got the scoop if you haven't heard already go check out this uh like story link click links thing. Uh, I will try and make sure to have that in the description box so that you guys can have a direct link to it. Um, so, oh my goodness. Now talk about this store because those discrete covers are absolutely amazing. What made you decide to do a discrete line? So the conversation, just like the conversation about visual versus um, non-visual, there was mm -hmm. a conversation on TikTok about covers. And I just remember thinking like, when I read 50 Shades in public for the first time, first of all, I was completely out of it. I, I'm a super nerd, super dork. I had no idea about 50 Shades and how it blew up. So I was on jury duty, just reading this book in public. And I remember looking up and multiple people were staring at me. One woman waved. I mean, they were, they were smiling. They, they thought that it was funny though. Um, but not everybody wants to interact with other people when they're out in public about what they're reading. Right. And many covers and titles, it's very obvious what you're reading and people will insert themselves. Some people don't know boundaries. So <laughs> they will come up and give it's you true. their unsolicited opinion. And I just remember thinking like, what's important is that people are able to read the books. That is the most important thing is that they're, they're able to purchase them without any difficulties. And in some countries, and I'm, my books are sold worldwide, in some countries, women delete their reading apps off their phones because wow. they're, they do not, they cannot risk somebody figuring out what they're reading. Um, and in other places, like they, they would not be caught dead with a cover with, you know, an embraced couple or even a man chest. Um, so I just thought I need to make my books accessible to everybody and let's do this in a very pretty way. And for years, I wanted to do, you know, the complete collection of Willow Winters and number all of my books and have them all looking very pretty because multiple books have different sizes. Like the, mm -hmm. my first five, the Valettis are much taller. Forget Me Not was originally signed with Ever After Romance for paperback right. production. So that one's a different size as well. So they don't look aesthetically pleasing on a bookshelf when they're all lined up. So I was like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it in a way where it's visually appealing, where it's it's graphically accommodating for anybody to say, I'm going to read this and nobody's going to judge me for reading it because it just looks like, it almost looks like a classic book. Like you could be reading anything. You could be reading <clears throat> Winnie the Pooh. It could be Winnie the Pooh in that book with that cover. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but I actually did get a little bit of pushback from that because... I've been saying I was going to do the completed collection for forever and they wanted it with sexy covers. So next month when this is live, I will have the same exact like aesthetically pleasing, but in gray spines with black and white sexy men on the front covers of all of my books unnumbered. Yeah. Wow. That's, that way I'm, I'm like, there's the, you know, hear me roar. This is what I'm reading. Yes. So stay out of my business. I'm not in yours. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. That's amazing. That is it, so amazing. Congratulations. I should have first slide. Thank you. I'm excited. And I had like a folder of all these sexy like men that used to be on my covers because they mm -hmm. rebranded years ago when I did the Willow and W Winter split. I rebranded to be more faces or couples like right. less of the man chest. So I have all, like thousands of dollars worth of photos that will finally be used again. <laughs> I know, right? Wow, that's I, like, amazing. I opened up that folder and I was like, way to like waste money. Like, <laughs> Hey, it's coming back. It's it's reaping yeah. those benefits now. So that, exactly. that that's amazing. That is so cool. So when do you write? I know, right? So I was supposed to finish two novels in January. Instead, I had that viral TikTok for this discrete series. 
uh, both of them still only have six chapters on each of them out of 30. <laughs> so I have paused both of those. And now I'm just writing one chapter a day. Just, I only need one to two hours to write a full chapter. And if I just write one chapter a day, I will have time to finish these, these two like novellas for the, mm -hmm. um, the newsletter builders that are due. Um, and then I had to push back a little bit dirty by month for the same reason. I was just overwhelmed with literally physically signing and shipping. We had thousands of orders come in. Um, it's like over 18,000 books now. So, <laughs> so wow. I know it's ridiculous. It is, it is insane. I'm very blessed and very grateful. Um, but if, if we have another viral TikTok, I might have to like they, they, not all books can be signed or something like like switch something up or pause the store or something because I do actually have to write. Right. January was the least amount of writing. I think I only wrote two or three chapters in all of January. And that is the least I have ever written in six years. Wow. So yeah. So I'm February has not been that. February has been far more productive writing wise because I'm prioritizing it again. And now that I have a balance with all of these orders, um, so yeah, so usually I write, well, I used to write at night and then I got pregnant and had Cody and then I started having to write during the day, but now I'm getting back into the habit of having a glass of wine and writing at night. Nice. So what are your favorite sort of cozy writing items to have? We already know you drink, drink, drink some wine. Yes. What else? Earplugs. I like I sleep with earplugs, but I also write with earplugs. I know that a lot of like writers that like, listen to music, I can't. I literally I put my earplugs in and I ignore my children <laughs> and my husband. That's one of the reasons I went write at night. Is because so like a real like the squishy like, ones. Like these. Yeah. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. That okay. Interesting. Yeah. So you I know, really right? <laughs> you really like zone out nothing. I do. Exactly. Just yeah. I, I don't want to hear anything. I don't want to see anything. I have my glass of wine and I just write and I just write on normal word doc. It's nothing fancy at all. And, um, I just get it done. I just want to fall into the scene. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. So we have talked about so much. Let's do something random at this point. Um, I have three cards. Willow was, uh, kind enough to inadvertently give me her favorite number so i drew some <laughs> cards <laughs> and we have some questions so what is the trait most people deplore in yourself that doesn't make any sense <laughs> maybe i can't maybe i can't read let's see what is the trait you most deplore in yourself there we go what does deplore mean I guess despise or don't like about yourself? Oh, my lack. So there's a, there's a number of things. Okay. My lack of patience though. I <laughs> struggled. Like I struggle with my, my patience in all things. Like, <laughs> are you laughing? Because that's like, that's very obvious. Like, I'm not uh, no, person. no. Um, I can relate. Um, did, <laughs> when did this uh, lack of patience come about? Was it before or after you had kids? <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> definitely. It definitely heightened after the kids. It definitely did. Yeah. <laughs> That's one thing. If I could do anything, it would be like my just patience and more calm. Like if I could just have more patience and more calm, it, I feel like my life would just be easier. <laughs> oh my yeah. Hilarious. Okay. So we have a would you rather. Mm -hmm. Would you rather wear a monitor that beeps when you're like when you're lying so telling a fib or it beeps when you're attracted to someone the the lying i would rather it beep when i'm lying because i try like <laughs> not to lie even to the kids sean and i we actually just had a conversation about that where he was like it's okay to fib a little bit and i'm like i don't i don't like that because then you're setting yourself up like, <laughs> mm -hmm. like yeah so i would rather the the lying one because i do not need that beeping <laughs> <laughs> when you find somebody uh interesting right exactly. <laughs> could you just imagine sean next to me and that thing's going off and there's some guy like i do not need that i let's keep that part private like <laughs> <laughs> and if you got stuck in an elevator 
and were forced to listen to only one song, what song would you pick? Oh my gosh. I like Little Talks. I could listen to that song on repeat. Um, you know, the Little Talks, no? You've never heard of it? No, before? I've never heard of Little Talks. How does it go? <sighs> oh, so I have a horrible memory, but it's like, um, it's the, oh, I'm going to, can I play it? No. No? I okay. will, no. I will listen to, I'll figure it out later. But I'll play it later? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's so kind of like, it's kind of, it. I listen what, to it on. So, repeat. what genre of music would it be considered? I think it's alternative. Uh, really interesting. Yeah, of monsters and men. Yes. So it's really. I, oh, oh come on. Um, so I don't like walking around this old this old empty house. So hold my hand. I'll walk with you, my dear. The stairs creep as I fall asleep. Have you ever? No. That's no. not ringing a bell. No. No, um, I, I, I'm really intrigued now. So I will definitely be listening to this afterwards. Oh, my it's goodness. Really, for, throughout like the entire Merciless world, I would just listen. This one would always come up and kind of play on repeat. Yeah. There's an old voice in my head that's holding me back. We'll tell her that I missed our little talks. Yeah. Mm. That, yeah. I like okay. I. Yeah. It has like okay. a little bit of it has like there's some sadness to it, but it's it's also there's some like, well, I'm here for you. And in the, I don't know if there's multiple versions or not, but it's a man and a woman who sings it. So yeah, okay, I, love it. <laughs> I will definitely be checking that out. Hopefully you guys will go check that out as well. I will put yeah. the uh, title name and the band down in the description box so you guys can go check it out as well. Well, oh my goodness. Thank you, Willow, for joining me and letting me introduce you to my world. Um, you are one of my favorite authors, so I just love that we got Thank to chat you. and <laughs> Thank um, you. things like that. We got to know you a little bit better and know about the things that you have coming up. Thank you. I'm so happy that you have me here. Okay. <laughs> Everyone, I hope you enjoyed that little chat and introduction to the wonderful, amazing Willow Winters. Like I said, I will have some things down in the description box so you guys can go check her out. Make sure you're checking out her store and all of her novels. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Also, there is a feedback form down in the description box so you guys can help me improve my channel. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in another video. If you come